All right. Good evening, Europe. So I just want to clarify something before I even begin with this video. If I do end up using the title that I'm thinking of, I first feel the need to say that I'm happy that Italy won, okay? Like the first place is the only place I will not be changing on the scoreboard, okay? All right, now that I avoided a scandal, we can continue. So Eurovision happened and I honestly didn't even realize how much I miss it. But this year is just something else, man. Like I don't know if it's because it was canceled last year, so we had a two year long break or like the songs were just mad good this year. But after this Saturday, I now realize that liking Eurovision has become part of my personality. So I'm gonna make a YouTube video about it. I just think that some countries were robbed this year, I, as some countries are every year. So I feel like someone has to edit the scoreboards to make it more fair. So I'll be taking that role this year um, because I don't see anyone else volunteering. Also, if you're wondering who chose me for this job, um, I did, but it was a unanimous decision. So don't worry. Okay, found a scoreboard. So I think I want to begin from the bottom tier. So the UK. Yeah, I'm not changing anything for the UK. <laughs> Actually, I think I want to give them like three points. I'm sorry, I just, I feel so bad. Like zero points, are you kidding me? From the juries and from the televoting, that's brutal. Like no one deserves that. No matter how bad a song is, no one deserves that. But I mean, it's not your fault necessarily. Like it's just, at this point, it's become funny to put them in last place. Like it's, it's a running joke that the UK always sends bad songs because they do but it's not even that the songs are that bad it's just that they are unnecessary like the show can smoothly go on without uk entries. you know i started watching eurovision in 2008 so i don't know much about the shows prior to that year but except for 2007 i know damn well that serbia won in 2007 but i have a feeling like the uk won once in the past when most of the songs were like that like when most of the songs had that energy that god awful energy and now they feel like that is what they need to do and that is what they need to copy and that is the recipe for success like oh we need to match that same exact energy uh uh honey the gays took over eurovision now so you need a show not a cheesy song actually you know what i'll give them four points and put them before germany because what the fuck was this the only good thing about this song was the girl in the peace sign costume which ended up being anything but the peace sign next up is spain i don't remember this dude at all i think this was my pee break but i think he had a few very high notes and when he was standing next to nikki tutorials all i kept thinking was that picture of bruno mars and taylor swift but that's not enough to change his course so he's gonna be staying there i'm genuinely hoping the reason spain has sent this is because they were too busy with filming the final season of la casa de papel so they just spent all of their money and energy on that and if that is the case respect next up the netherlands okay this one was boring but i think this one was boring for a reason because my theory is that the netherlands didn't want to risk winning eurovision again and having to spend more money on eurovision next year and again respect all right and finally we are on the good stuff um san marino <laughs> i have stuff to say about san marino first of all the song really wasn't bad but that's what you get for trying to cheat with florida honestly i genuinely thought that florida was like originally from san marino when i saw him on that stage but seriously playing the celebrity card low that is low celebrities have no place on eurovision this is not a competition of who is more famous okay this is a show where local celebrities can go and potentially try to get more internationally known following this the uk can easily just bring like fucking harry styles on there you know but they don't because this is not a place for a-listers not like florida is an a-lister i don't even i don't even know any songs from him oh okay oh okay but still, oh, oh, okay. But I mean, still, that's, he's not an A-lister. Anyways, all I want to say is this is not a celebrity-friendly show, okay? Actually, not only is this not a celebrity-friendly show, American celebrities, fuck that. Ow. Is nothing sacred to you anymore? I mean, no offense, but stay out of this, okay? <laughs> for your own good, actually. Australia tries every year. That's why they didn't qualify, because this is not fit for non-European countries. It just always looks foreign it's chaotic but like foreign chaotic like it's artificially made chaos okay you shouldn't try so hard it should just come naturally to you 
Actually, I shouldn't be so critical of Australia. They did give us two points after all. I need to keep that in mind. So San Marino, you're staying in that place. I would have put you even lower, honestly, because it is, it's, it's what she deserves. Okay, okay, it was funny watching him be very confused in the green room, but I still don't approve. Also, does anybody know how much they paid Florida to be there? Please tell me. Okay, next up, I feel like Albania, um, Norway, Moldova and Portugal all deserve the next four places with Albania being the highest out of the four of them because they gave Serbia one point and the rest did not. <laughs> no, these four weren't as forgettable. Well, except for Portugal. They were just very average. I did honestly like Albania the best out of these because they had a bit of these cultural ethnic sounds in a song and I always respect every country that does that. She also sang in Albanian which is a big big plus. Oh yeah I should have included that criteria from the start. Yeah for all of these things Albania goes to the 18th place. No you know what fuck it Albania in the 17th Israel in the 18th. Israel was okay like she knows how to sing but she sounds like every other bitch. There were a lot of songs that sounded exactly the same to me. Um, actually, in the second semi-final, every song sounded like the one before it. <laughs> I'd much rather change Israel for Croatia, honestly. Or Norway for Croatia, one of the two. Because Croatia was fucking robbed and everyone knows that. Like, they literally had everything. I don't understand what the problem was. Like, it wasn't a basic Balkan ballad. She's so cute. The chorus was really catchy. The whole performance was great. Robbed. Absolutely robbed. I can't tell you a single word from the Norway song and somehow he qualified and Croatia didn't. The only reason I like that Norway qualified is because he was allegedly hooking up with Azerbaijan and I am all for Eurovision sex scandals. <laughs> Speaking of Azerbaijan, a bop. I actually didn't expect it to score so low so I switch Azerbaijan and Greece for a couple of reasons. A. Greece didn't give us any points. Uh, I just don't know what happened to good old neighbor politeness, you know, but okay and B I like my Greek songs to have that Greek tune in them This one was too modern and in this case we need to reject modernity and embrace tradition I think I said a completely opposite thing for the UK entry, but I changed my mind now Also one more reason I don't like when the performance is too focused on the way it will look on the TV screen because I can't even imagine how awkward it was to watch this live in the arena because like essentially it was just a girl in front of a green screen. A girl in her green screen. That should be the name of the band. So yeah, we're switching these two. Okay, but after watching these behind the scenes and seeing how everyone is just so well coordinated. Look at this. Look at how close to the camera this guy is and he still doesn't get in the shot. You know what? Maybe they deserved every point they got. Also, Azerbaijan, she gave me everything I hoped I would get from Azerbaijan. Like this is a radio song, you know? This is like... 2021's version of Soldi. Next up is Belgium and something about Belgium is that it sounds like an end credit for a western movie. Like it sounds like the color yellow. Like like it sounds like a movie that has the yellow tint over it and like those like lines, the broken TV effect overlay. But it was boring um, <laughs> and they deserved every televote point they got which was a generous three. Actually I would trade Belgium for Croatia not Norway. Yeah, Belgium deserves to be sacrificed for Croatia. Then we got Cyprus. Cyprus saw that the public enjoyed the Fuego and they said copy and paste but cut the hair. I actually hated it when I first heard it. Now I don't mind it but I do think it got the score it deserved. It also sounds exactly like Lady Gaga Bad Romance if you ask me. Like maybe Bad Romance and Judas combined or something like that. Like even the color scheme was very Bad Romance vibes. So yeah, I don't think I would give them any higher place because of that. Also Greece, what the fuck? You gave Cyprus 12 points, which like I under didn't even doubt it, okay? I get it. But that just shows that you're still keeping up with the tradition and you're giving points to your neighbors, right? We're almost your neighbors. We're literally your main income in the summer, like all serves vacation in Greece. Why did you give us some points? Five at least, come on. No? Shame on you. <laughs> and now we're here. Um, this one hurt like a bunch you gotta stick. And I don't think I set like unrealistic standards for this song. Like I knew we're not gonna win. This wasn't a winning song. I was rooting for Italy to win. Like even the girls that sang for Serbia were rooting for Italy to win. But like, do you understand the consequences <laughs> of your actions on Saturday? One time, one time we send you a fast song and you betray us like that. One time we don't send a ballad, a boring fucking sad slow song one time we don't play safe we send you some spice like imagine you're cooking right now okay after years of us giving you only the salt to season your food we now come in with like a 
season mix of some sort. I didn't, I don't know where I was going with this. Um, and you just look at us and say no. You don't understand. I'm scared <laughs> of what we're gonna send next year because I have a really bad feeling that it's gonna be just another ballad and I can't take it anymore. Listen, I may be biased. I probably am, but I really liked our entry this year and I actually really like them as artists in general I think they're really refreshing for the Serbian scene. So I am gonna put them in 10th place because I can also I, I think according to televoting they were ninth, and the voice of the people is the only voice that matters Also, they were literally the only country I liked in the second semifinals Oh, also I liked Switzerland. Switzerland was really good. Well, actually I liked Switzerland until he started winning. <laughs> At that point I was like, Bestie, Bestie, where are you going? Next up is Sweden, uh, fucking boring. Like, <laughs> he was adorable, but they gave him a boring song. Um, even this place is honestly kind of high, but I don't know if I want to change it because he looks like a really good person. Next up, Bulgaria. Billie Eilish called she wants her song back, literally. Okay, but you did give us a few votes, so you can stay there, I guess. <laughs> I'm so much less objective than I thought. <laughs> no, she was cute. Actually, she was really cute. I'm just really mean. I wasn't in the mood for a slower song this year and that's it, but she was actually really good. She sounds like a literal angel welcoming you at the gates of heaven if heaven ever existed. Next up is Russia. I actually thought that Russia will come in like third or something. I loved it. I don't think I would have loved it as much, honestly, if it wasn't for the performance, but everything was just so well thought out. Like, I don't speak Russian, so I didn't understand her, but I understood everything she was telling me, you know? And when she turned and showed all those clips on the screen, oh my, literally winner energy. I don't know what happened with the votes. I loved it. I think I'm gonna put it in third place. Like technically maybe she should have finished fifth looking at other songs, but I'm just mad that she didn't finish in top five in general So she's going in the third place. Then we have Lithuania. Oh, I love this man He looks like such a good person like the purest soul in like Europe the entire continent <laughs> I was so happy when I saw that he qualified for the grand final and then I saw his reaction And it looked like he didn't even expect it and then I was even more happy because of that And then he almost cried and then I almost cried because he almost cried. Uh, I wish him nothing but the best in life Honestly, I'm just so happy Happy he got in top 10, so I don't think I want to change his score. This bitch can sing. Like, at the end of the song, my jaw was on the floor. But I don't like this song for Eurovision. Like, it sounds... I don't know how to explain it. Like, it sounds... American. <laughs> for lack of a better word. It just sounds like it belongs in a Disney movie. Actually, there were a couple of songs that sounded very Disney uh, to me. Like, Macedonian song sounded like it belonged to Lion King, and this one, Malta, sounded like it belonged to Hercules. I've never seen either of those two movies, so I don't know if that's correct. Yeah, I know, a big gap in my movie knowledge, huh? Malta had a pop song, like not Eurovision pop, just pop. And there's a difference between those. Like, Eurovision pop is a pop song that has, like, a tint of like copyright free music vibe in it. You know what I mean? Like Euphoria, that's Eurovision pop. Actually, maybe, hmm, that one's hard. Ooh, Emily, the forest only future. So that was Eurovision pop, I feel like. Malta was just pop. Lithuania, Lithuania this year, that was Eurovision. Israel, Israel was Eurovision pop as well. Was it? I'm not sure about Israel. You know what? Maybe I'm not the most qualified person to make this video, but I think I'm already in too deep. Uh, oh my god, in too deep. That was. That was Serbia in 2017, right? Let me check. I think that was the name of the song. I was right, yes. Still got her, baby. You know what? I take that back. I am the most qualified person to do this. I also kind of didn't like Malta's attitude uh, at the final. And I know like, I shouldn't be shitting on an 18-year-old's attitude, especially when she has every right to hope for a win with a voice like that. But I feel like as soon as you qualify for the final, you should already feel like a winner because like there are so many factors involved when determining the winner of Eurovision that like it's so unexpected and you really shouldn't stress over it. You're at the final. The audience obviously likes you. You should just be happy and have fun and not sit there and dread the day you got to Rotterdam. It's as simple as that literally nothing matters anymore you showed us how good you are and what you can do with your voice also don't promote yourself so much on social media because people will not vote for you out of spite because you are everywhere then we got finland amazing listen absolutely what we need from finland every year this is exactly what i think people in finland look like <laughs> what i think people in finland listen to and i vote for finland to send a song like this every single year amazing loved it also our commentator was more excited about finland qualifying for the final than Serbia, which was very interesting to listen to this woman like try to control her excitement and 
feeling. <laughs> I put them in fifth place. They are for top five for sure. I mean, the Televos sold you everything. The public loved them. I love them. Good job, Finland. Next, Ukraine. Second place, and I will not settle for anything less than that. Listen, if Italy wasn't so good, I wouldn't want Ukraine to win, honestly. Like, this is another type of a song we need every year, right? Like, this is Eurovision in a nutshell. You have to admit that. Amazing. Like, I have no words left to describe this performance. <laughs> Deux points. Then Iceland. <sighs> Listen, there's just something about awkward middle-aged men that's just so comforting. Not that he's middle-aged, actually. He's probably, like, 30 or something. So just... Old age, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Very cute, like not a winning performance in my opinion, but a well-deserved fourth place. Top five for sure, maybe even top three. And now we're on the last three. Um, Now it's getting heated. So for Switzerland, as I already said, I liked the song until I saw they might win. Listen, I really don't mind the song, okay? It's a good song, I'm just glad it didn't win. And that's, that's literally all I have to say. I don't know, honestly, it kind of gave me the vibe of the Netherlands from 2019 and I don't need the same song to win twice in a row. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? Spain, this year, the parts where he had really high notes, the melody is literally the same as Duncan Lawrence's song. I forgot the name of the song, but like the song that won in 2019, literally the same. The Switzerland's song wasn't melodically similar to the winner, the previous winner, but I don't know, just like the vibe was really similar to me. I don't know. I kind of already reserved a third place as my gift to Russia for being robbed, so I think I'm gonna put him a bit lower. Okay, two more. France. She's cute. She sings in French, so that's a plus. Her grandpa is Serbian, so that's a big plus. <laughs> and also, definitely the biggest reason we gave her 12 points in jury votes. This is a classic Eurovision song from the previous century, and we need to stop with those. I just wasn't in the mood for slow songs this year, and I feel like no one was. I feel like we all just needed an energy boost this year, you know, which we did end up getting for most countries. This was voted so high purely because the jury still think we want these songs at Eurovision, and that's what you and that. So for France, I say top five they really want to like but i wouldn't be mad if they went a bit lower as well and finally our winner and my winner as well italy had everything they sang in italian which i love because there's no better way of representing your country than singing in that country's language what can i say except they came they saw they were mahmoud because we all know that mahmoud landing in second place was the biggest robbery of the past decade actually you know what now i'm thinking about this maybe it's good that he didn't win because like if mahmoud won in 2019 then we wouldn't get monoskin this year because like italians wouldn't even bother to send a good song since like no country wants to host eurovision twice you know everything does happen for a reason i got nothing else to say about italy except justice is served thank you europe for making them the winners and for introducing me to this band i don't even like rock like i don't listen to rock music like i don't like rock but i like their rock okay that's it i don't think i did the best job but i I think I changed the most important parts for the better, so justice is served again. Well, partially at least. Okay, psych, just just kidding, I, I changed it again. I think this is my final decision. Okay, in all honesty, I made this video just as an excuse to talk about every performance. Like, I actually think the original scoreboard was very accurate, <laughs> like, almost every country got the score it deserved, but I don't know, I just thought this was a good title for the video. <laughs> Let me know what I did wrong in the comments, but please don't start fights if you don't agree with me because I have been very emotionally fragile this year and I won't be able to take it.